has taught you and also this has given me a road back for the next step for That's exactly my right. lessons as well. Yeah. Um, can we ask all the performers, oh, oh what, what I question? I have a question from yes. Mr. Yes. Um, <laughs> do you compare notes of your teaching techniques with your mom's? Yes. And I would love to learn how the teaching techniques have evolved between the two generations. That's a great question. So um, I'm a link in a chain, a very, very, very old chain that goes back many thousands of years. It starts with the first teachers. And um, the hope is that every single time we get a new generation of teachers, we make incremental improvements. <laughs> in fact, there might be some more teachers in here right now. Um, and so she taught me all, better than pretty much anybody else probably could have from her generation. Um, that being said, when the pandemic arrived, a lot of the people from her generation retired, which is really sad, but it also provided an opportunity for my generation to step forward. Um, and so, <laughs> and so um, number one is integration of new technology. I think that's been a big part of this. And so for Ritu's lesson, for example, we're using a Muse score quite a bit to kind of write out her music, whereas in my youth, I was writing it out by hand just like Beethoven, except not quite as good, probably. Um, there are other things too, though. Education is a science, and so pedagogy is something that is constantly growing. We're getting new and exciting research about how students learn, how they understand, how we can better facilitate that process. And so, let's see, what's a good example of this? Um, layering is a very old-fashioned way of teaching but it's actually been refined quite a bit in recent years and so the way that i teach ritu is very much based on this idea of we, we establish one idea and so maybe we would just work on pitches and rhythms to begin with and then once those are established we build on top of those while maintaining them as well and so we might add dynamics after that loudness and softness or we might add articulation the specifics of how you play each note and then we might eventually get to expression and so that's something that I put into my teaching that wasn't really in it, most of the teaching of my teachers, partially because piano teachers aren't regulated. Um, <laughs> um, so that's one way in which things have changed. That being said, a lot of the core ideas, though, they're, they've been there all along. And I think the most important core idea of teaching is compassion. Um, I don't teach for the big paycheck. I don't teach because, uh, oh, I might as well just do teaching. That was never my, my thinking when I went into teaching. Um, I kind of came into it by accident. I never really intended to be a teacher, but when I was in college, a friend of mine asked me to teach his kid. I'd have never had so much fun in my entire life. I had an absolute blast. We giggled all the time. It was a little bit disruptive, but that's okay. It was mostly me. Um, you teach because you love it, and because my joy for music is something I found is kind of infectious, but in a good way. Um, I can't really imagine myself doing anything else, actually. I've tried other things, they didn't really stick. <laughs> it's not quite the same thing to even work at Facebook than it is to teach. <laughs> and so, yeah. Thank you.